This video is going to give you an overview of what the Android Things console is and when you are likely to use it. We'll discuss using the console for creating your custom Android Things images as well as setup and debugging. Let's get started. The Android Things console provides tools to install and update the system image on supported hardware devices. Using the console, developers can download and install the latest Android Things system image, build factory images that contain OEM applications along with the system image, as well as push over the air updates including OEM to devices. Notice in the console it contains a hamburger menu. Clicking that we can see products, analytics and tools, products being the default screen. Under tools you have the setup utility. This is a script you can download to flash your Android Things device with your product and to set up your development Wi-Fi connection. Using this tool is explained in another lesson. Under analytics you have different analytics showing insights into active users and device update status. We'll explore this further in another lesson. Let's go back to products. To get started, we will create a new product. You can see on my console, I already have some projects, but let's start a new one for this video. First, we enter a product name. This is the name of the product you are creating. For instance, smart light or candy dispenser. The SOM type is the system on a module that you will be developing for. Here we are using a Raspberry Pi. We'll leave the rest as default and click to create our product. Once a product has been created, we land on the product page. Here in the middle, we can edit the details we already entered upon product creation. At the bottom, we can share access for our product with other people. This is a role-based access system, allowing you to add others to own the product or only build, edit and release or only view. At the top, we have our model section. A model is a particular flavor of your product. For example, you may have a base model and a luxury model of your product. As such, you could then update features for all the luxury models separate to the base models. Here we only have one model, let's click on that. Once inside a product model, there are two tabs of configuration. Let's look at build. This tab is where you will create your Android Things system image. A system image is the whole operating system contained in a zip file that you will flash to an SD card for development on the Raspberry Pi. Let's create a new build. Clicking new, then select start from scratch. Name your configuration. You might want to include some versioning information for the image, or perhaps a hint at what you have included in your bundle. Clicking next allows you to select the system image. It's always recommended you select the latest version here. You can then choose what apps you want to bundle into your image. By default, it is showing that Google Play Services is going to be added. You could add your own or other third party apps. For over the air update builds, this is where you add your app. We won't add any. Hit next. Here you can also include files to change the animations for when your custom Android Things build is starting, i.e. the boot screen. Creating a boot screen zip is discussed in another video. Hit next. Finally, you can edit the size of your OEM partition. The OEM partition is where your pre-installed apps lie. If you have a use case where you create a lot of user data, you may want to extend that partition. Let's leave it as default and hit create build. Once you have created your first build, they appear below the creation steps at the bottom of the tab. Now you can download the image to later flash it to a device. When you click download, that is when it creates and packages your system image, so it will take some time, be patient. The other tab is release. This is for releasing over the air updates. If you have flashed a device with a system image from the build tab, you can now deploy updates to your app on that device using the OTA feature. In this tab we have channels. Channels allow you to deploy different versions of your product to different user bases. For example, the canary channel could be for people only on your team and then the stable channel is for the general public. By default, all devices are subscribed to the stable channel. Changing the channel for your device is covered in another lesson. Let's use the default stable channel for now by clicking that row. Let's start a new update. Click start a new update and then select which factory image you want to update. We select the OTA factory image that we created. Click next to select our config options. We'll publish to 100% of our user base, which is just us. Click push update, then confirm with push. This may not be instant. It will actually be staggered as this is a load managed by Google's resources and servers. That's it. You now understand the Android Things console and how you can leverage it to help you create your own Android Things images as well as use tools to help you install and update your devices in production. 